this integral, integral of sine squared of x is one of these integrals where you can't integrate by using any methods that you know, like u substitution is not going to work, even after u substitution, if you try the integration with parts or other things, you can't do the integral. Uh, so it's an example of an integral where you can't write down the antiderivative in a closed form. So when you're being asked to do the integral from 0 to 1, that means that uh, you can't just use the fundamental theorem of calculus. You have to instead use something like Riemann sum. But even if it's Riemann sum, then you have to evaluate sine x squared at several points. And you can do Simpsons or whatever. But that requires you to calculate the values of sine, right? And therefore, instead of that, uh, we'll be using what? McLaurin series or the uh, Taylor series, right? If we use the Taylor series, we can calculate the value of this integral without having to calculate any signs. That's the beauty of this method. It's a lot easier. So uh, what we do is we start out by the, the series for sine, sine of x. What's the McLaurin series of, for sine? X. Minus um, over 1 over 3 factorial x cubed, cubed plus 1 over five. 5 factorial x to the fifth minus 1 over 7 x to the seventh, so on and so on. Okay. Uh, therefore, if you replace x by x squared, sine x squared's Maclaurin series would be x squared minus 1 over 3 factorial x to the 6th plus 1 over 5 factorial x to the what? x to the 10th tenth. Tenth power minus 1 over 7 factorial x to the 14th power. And therefore, if these two sides are the same, we can integrate both sides. And the result is that uh, you have uh, integral of sine x squared dx equal to, well, x squared integrates to what? 2x. One oh, no, you're, you're integrating, not differentiating. Oh, oh. One, one over three x cubed. Now, uh, three factorial is six. If you integrate x to six, that's x to the seventh, and you need to you need to put the reciprocal of 7, which is 1 7th. 1 7th times 1 6th is 1 over 42. 5 factorial is 120. If you integrate x to the 10th power, that's x to the 11th power. And you do uh, 11 times 120, that will be 1 3 2 0. And then this one will be uh, x to the 15th. I know that 7 factorial is 5, 0, 4, 0, but then you multiply by 15, so it's uh, some big number here. Okay. Now, because, and then so on and so on, okay? And because we're trying to integrate from 0 to 1, this has to be evaluated from 0 to 1. So when you plug in 1, this is the series you get. You get 1 third minus 1 over 42 plus 1 over 1320 minus some big number, 5040 zero, zero times 15, and then plus something. And then when you plug in 0, there is nothing. So this, this is the actual value of the integral of sine x squared from 0 to 1. Notice that this is what we call an alternating series. What, what's an alternating series? Adding, subtracting. Yeah, adding, subtracting. And, and the mental picture that you have to have is that it's jumping back and forth, right? You, you take a, a step of 1 third to the right, and then a step of 1 over 42 to the left, and right and left, right? 
And because the step sizes are getting smaller and smaller and it's going to zero, eventually this summation will converge somewhere, right? That's called the alternating series test. Uh, if you have an alternating series where the jumps are becoming smaller and smaller and it's going to zero, it has to converge somewhere. And then uh, we also know the maximum error. So for example, if we truncate this series over here and take this to be our approximate value, what's the error of that approximation to the real thing? 10,000. Uh, well, that's your guess, but what would... If you have any alternating series where it's going back and forth, the step sizes are getting smaller and smaller and going to zero, and you stop somewhere, the maximum error is? The size of your last jump. It's the size of your next jump. Next oh. jump. So if you, if you stop right here, mm -hmm. the error is this size. Right. Okay. And this is definitely bigger than 10,000. So if we, if we uh, just cut off here, this approximation is, we'll, we'll have an error less than 1 out of 10,000, 0 0.0001. But I said only 0 0.001, so actually, you can just stop here, because if you just take this to be the approximate value for the exact value of integral of 0 to 1 of sine squared, sine x squared, then the error will be less than 1 over 1320, which is less than 0 0.001. So because the truncation of Run truncation of an alternating series series as max error equal to the next term. If it's negative, you have to take the absolute value. So if you truncate here, this will be your error. If you truncate here, then this will be your error. If you truncate here, then whatever that's on the left, next one is your maximum error. Okay? Uh, and because 1 over 1320 is less than 0.001, uh, we know that just the one third minus one over forty two uh, is an approximation of the integral of sine x squared from zero to one with error less than 0 0.001. In fact, it's less, less even, it's actually slightly better than that, right? Yeah. So the answer is this number, but let's just write this in terms of a, a single fraction. So if I multiply 14 top and bottom, then you get 14 over 42 minus 1 over 42. So that's 13 over 42. 13 over 42 is the approximate value of this integral. And that's actually pretty impressive if you think about the alternative way, ways to get this value because if you were to use the Riemann sum, you'll pretty much have to divide this into like 10 different points and evaluate all that and uh, whether you use the Simpsons or, I don't even know the error for that. So it's, uh, th this method will be a lot better than doing it that way.